Hey, Sophie King drop back again in the kitchen of dreams with yet another attempt of our gin review. The one I'm going to review tonight is a classic. Well, it is a classic to Sophie King drunk because you probably read the, <laughs> the thing at the top. You know it's the Bombay Sapphire. 80 on the Richter scale. That's 40% alcohol. Uh, been made... Uh, from a recipe since 1761. Well, there you go. Man. That's a history out of the way. So anyway, that's all. I like showing the full bottle. That's the full litre. Uh, and now it's the one. <laughs> it's the one that's slightly uh, dented in it. So anyway, a shout out to the pocket rocket. Uh, she helped me dent that. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's get this in in the glass. See what it's all about. Uh, if you're back again, thank you for returning back to Sophie King Drunk's channel. Uh, I put out a beef eater uh, review not that long ago, and uh, I was really surprised the uh, the amount of feedback it, it got, uh, a lot of views it got. So uh, I've always got Bombay Sapphire. It's an old favourite of myself and uh, the Pocket Rocket. So. Let's go in and we'll get in the nose and see what we can come up with. Once again, it was in the freezer. So it's nice and chilled. Get the old haziness glass. For me, uh, very, very clean smelling spirit. Lovely citrus burst of uh, lemon. Lovely berry smell. But it's a cleanness, very clean. I find in my journey through gin, and there'll be someone maybe watching us, and maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I know everybody's got a different palate, and we pick up things differently. Uh, but there's a lot of people out there that are probably drinking even higher end gins. But for me, that is a top shelf gin, Bombay Sapphire. Um, this is where I've got to uh, with gins. I've tried a lot of them, but this is where I've got to. So. Anyway, Sophie King drunk drinking a Bombay Sapphire. 80 on a Richter scale. That's 40% alcohol to all you other people that don't watch uh, Sophie King drunk's uh, videos. Let's see what it's all about. Sanji Bar. Oh. That is a glider. That's... Slidey glidey over the taste buds. That is really smooth. Really, really smooth. No alcohol burn in that one at all. Uh, some of the gins you get, if you try them straight, just out of the bottle. I prefer to put mines before I go any further. Put them in the freezer. A bit like a vodka. A lot of people say, why do you do that? Uh, because sometimes you ain't got a, you've run out of ice and you like your gin and tonic. Or your gin and lemonade, or whatever your poison is, uh, you like that, like that uh, chilled uh, tinge to it. A lot of people put ice in their drinks, right? And I'm not decrying what people do, put ice in their drinks, but to me that just dilutes it. It dilutes it, especially for liquor drinkers, because you end up all you can taste is the juice, the coke, the fresh orange, the grapefruit, or lemonade, or whatever you put in it. But with gin, gin. Uh, I've discovered if you just put even put the bottle in the fridge in the freezer for a few hours and then maybe before you go and start drinking it take it out and put it in the fridge and every time you pour a couple of glasses of gin uh, just put it back in the fridge don't leave it out and it'll save on the ice because the ice to me just sometimes you're paying high end prices like I paid well, I got that the old Tesco deal. I got that uh, the the club card deal. Uh, but you can go as high as twenty seven quid for the liter. And to be honest, it's pended twenty seven quid and uh, throwing ice into it and diluting it and think, oh, that's a great gin. It's even better without ice and it's still chilled. So that's my idea behind the fridge and the freezer technique. So anyway, I'm boring you. I'm away from my drink. So anyway. As I said, very smooth, no alcohol burn at all, 80 on a Richter scale, 
it's got a lovely lovely soft glide to it uh, very very soft you can tell you for me drinking a higher end gin uh, what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to put a mix in it my preference mixer is normally tonic but I haven't got any tonic so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of lemonade in it I'm going to steal some of the pocket rockets lemonade and uh, we'll see what it's all about I have drank gin and lemonade before and didn't mind it so anyway it's got a little bit of lemonade in it getting the old more lemon uh, uh, citrus coming up the burst because that's the lemonade going in but this in lemonade in fairness to me is the way i prefer to drink lemonade uh this has been in for quite a few days and it's went flat and i love the taste of flat lemonade so that's another thing i've learned as well but i do like fizzy tonic i don't like flat tonic so anyway enough waffling let's go in for the taste Very smooth, nice soft glide again, unoffensive, taste buds very moorish, very moorish, um, absolute classic gin for it. Let's have a wee look at the bottle, let's get the eye furniture on, have a wee look at the bottle and see what it says, it's a Bombay Sapphire Distilled London Dry Gin, vapour infused since 1761, I've already bored you with that. The Grains of Paradise from West Africa. Cubic berries from Java. I thought Java was coffee, but there you go. It's a place as well. Cassia bark from India, China. Almonds from Spain. Almonds and gin. I didn't know that. My goodness. The botanics. Licorice from China. My goodness. The juniper berries are from Italy. The lemon peel from Spain. The coriander from Morocco. Angelica root from Saxony. And the Oris or the Irish root from Italy. My goodness, see if you were a home brewer, you wanted to do it, you wanted to make a clone of that. It would cost you a few quid, man, going around all those places, get gathering those ingredients, but an absolute belting gin. Absolute belting. So, anyway, is it one I'm going to drink again? Come on, you do it. Look, man, I'm, I'm doing that, and we've got a liter to go. You do the maths. So anyway, Sophie King drunk, drinking a Bombay Sapphire. So, what am I going to give Bombay Sapphire? 80 on the Richter scale, 40% alcohol for all the other darlings that have turned up. And maybe I'm bored, uh, or maybe I have entertained, I don't know. But darling, please return. Uh, what am I going to give that? I'm going to give that. I never, I never give anything 100% score. But this is damn, damn near it. I'm going to give this a 4.99 out of 5. Yeah, 4.999 out of 5. So if you've had the Bombay Sapphire before, you liked it. And if you didn't like it, you're not a gin drinker. But if you did like that, drop a line below. Tell me what, tell me what you thought me <laughs> this review but tell me what you thought of Bombay Sapphire and tell me any more seven suggestions what I should be doing it says on the bottle about cocktails for me that's wasted in a cocktail because it's so smooth unless you're high earner and then you'd obviously put that in a cocktail uh, but I ain't a high earner you can tell uh, so anyway let me know in the comments. Murder me in the comments, if you please. Uh, and I hope you... And if you stuck along to the end of this video, Sophie King Drunk, salutes you. Sophie King Drunk on Bombay Sapphire. But I'm not, actually. I've just finished one. And I've just had my tea and... Well, it's an arse story. I'll hopefully catch you in another gin review. Slangy Var, keep drinking the good gins out there. And if there's any really good gins out there that I haven't tried, there's a few I've tried. But let me know if there's any just as good as that or even better than that. Maybe I'm looking at the bottles and thinking, I don't like the look of that label. 
let me know in the comments. Slangy Va. Ciao for now.